I built an electric brewery following the instructions on theelectricbrewery.com. Some of the modifications that I made will be shown in this video. This video is about the brew pots. I did not use Blickman equipment as shown on the electric brewery website. Here, I'm starting to build the heating element in casings. This was started off by drilling a pilot hole into the metal blank cover for the one and one quarter inch radio punch. After the hole was made, I fed the element through the metal blank, shown here. I then attached the two and one quarter inch hole saw to the drill press to drill through the waterproof two gang box. I also put some wood underneath the two gang box to prevent the drill press platform from being damaged by the metal hole saw. After the cut was made, I used some metal files to clean up the newly made hole on the two gang box. I then began to prep some JB weld to adhere the two gang box to the metal blank. If the back of your two gang box is not completely flat, make sure to grind off any studs to make it flat for better adhesion. Also make sure to roughen up the areas where the JB weld will be attaching to. This will also help the adhesion. As you can see here, these are two mistakes I had made and had to correct later. Here I began to mark out where the sight glass would go on the boil kettle. I used oil and a small drill bit to punch a hole into the marked area, later switching to a large drill bit to make a guide hole for the 9 16 radio punch. Here I made another hole on the boil kettle for the heating element to pass through using the one and one quarter inch radio punch. The threads on the element base were having a hard time fitting through the hole. Using some files to take off some of the material around the edge of the hole solved this issue. This time I used a step drill bit to make a hole for the main ball valve on the hot liquor tank. As you can see the two ball valves for the Herms coil have already been attached. Here I assembled the main ball valve for the hot liquor tank with a T connector, temperature probe, and a type F cam lock fitting. Using a lot of pipe thread tape to make a good seal. This is the same for the mash tun main ball valve. Here I installed the brew thermometer on the hot liquor tank. This was already done on the boil kettle as I used it in my gas setup previously. I also decided not to install one on the mash tun until later. This was the installation of the sight glass on the hot liquor tank. I decided to forego a sight glass on the mash tun. Here I did the installation of the heating element on the hot liquor tank. This was the same as doing it on the boil kettle. Even though the heating element has a good seal on it, I used food grade silicon adhesive around the element connect inside of the two gang box to assist in preventing any liquids from leaking into the electrified area. A 240 volt 30 amp shock does not sound like a good afternoon to me, but making good beer without the worry of being electrocuted does.
Here I installed the top ball valve on the hot liquor tank so I can use a brew pump to circulate the water for better heating and to create a more even heating profile throughout the pot. Lastly, I drilled the holes and installed the ball valves on the mash tun, one for the main outlet that is attached to the false bottom and one that is attached to the hose that will sit on top of the grain bed for receiving recirculated wort. The wort will come from the main outlet on the mash tun into the herms coil that is located in the hot liquor tank and back to the top ball valve on the mash tun. This recirculation process will help keep the wort more clear by using the crushed grains as a natural filter. It will also keep the wort and the grain a more consistent temperature during the mash process. After the pots were ready, I started to work on finishing the heating elements. First I stripped the 300 volt 10-3 wire and added the terminals. Then I prepped the three prong twist lock plug for attaching the wire. Before I attached the wire, I put on the expandable braided sleeving and used heat shrink on both ends of the wire. I then attached the wire to the heating element and the twist lock plug. Lastly, I closed off the waterproof two-gang box with the metal blank cover. Thank you so much for watching. This has been a video on the brew pot and heating element build. Please keep an eye out for future videos including the control panel and temperature probes. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye <laughs>